Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, we were we were explaining about how we don't only worship Krishna, but we have to worship Krishna according to the teachings of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Where's the translator? Are you ready? So I'm explaining, when we worship Krishna, we have to worship Krishna according to teaching of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And we don't just only worship Lord Chaitanya. There are many devotees of many people worship Lord Chaitanya, but we follow the teaching of Lord Chaitanya as taught to Rupa Goswami. And we are following Lord Ch Rupa Goswami through our own founder Acharya A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. So we have to understand the importance of worshipping Krishna through the disciplic succession. So this lockdown has given everybody a chance to think more deeply about the importance of spiritual life. We can see so much suffering because of the lockdown. People, there's so much suffering, there's been so much suffering around the world. So that suffering is a punishment. It's a punishment, just like when God, when we do something wrong, we get punished. And so the same way, when the Supreme Lord, when the Supreme Lord is not happy with us, He punishes us. Because we've done, we've been doing so many sinful things. We've had so, we've seen so many animals killed. The cows have been killed, and so many. So we've done so many bad things to the planet. We put so many dirty things in all the rivers, all the rivers were full of garbage. And we, we took so much good land, which was good land there for farming, to build factories and to do stupid things with the, the land. So 
कसरा पैदा भो है हमें तस्त काम कर And we've been drilling in the ground and in the sea to take the oil out from the planet. So just like if you go to somebody's house, if you go to somebody's house and you, you, you know, they, they give you nice food and they give you a lot of comfort and take, take very good care of you. You, you want to thank the owner who takes care of you. You say, oh, thank you so much, you know, you give me so nice, you took care of me so nicely, I'm so grateful to you. So the same way we come to this planet, we live on this planet, we don't think who's give, who, does it, who does everything belong to, whose land is it, whose, whose water is it, who's providing everything for us, we don't think, we just only enjoy. So we're meant to do sacrifice, yagna vai Vishnu, we're meant to perform sacrifice for the pleasure of Lord Vishnu or Lord Krishna because it's all his property. But we've only been taking just for our own enjoyment and we didn't thank anybody, we didn't offer any yagya. So now we're suffering, we're getting punished, we deserve it. We get, we, de we get what we deserve. And if we, we can understand this suffering is the arrangement of Krishna, we can also understand that if we, go, if we do good, we can be rewarded. When we act in the proper way, when we do things in the proper manner and we recognize God as the proprietor, He will be pleased, He will reward us. And the, the result is we can actually get out of this material world. This world is the place where we get punished. There's no real enjoyment here in this material world because everything is so temporary and it all finishes with death. The young body grows old very quickly. And when you get old then you get disease and then you die. Nobody likes these things. This is the punishment of the material world. Therefore, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, the great souls who are yogis in devotion, they never come back to this material world. 
The great souls who are yogis in devotion, they, they never come back to this world because they know this is a place of death, this is a temporary place of birth and death. So devotees should think, there's, there's suffering here and getting punished here, I'll change my life, I'll do good, I'll get rewarded. What is the reward? The reward is we get out of this material world, out of samsara, and we get into the spiritual world, into the Vaikuntha, into Goloka, into the place of eternal life. We have to know how to make proper use of this human life. So this lockdown is a wonderful chance for all of us to ask, who am I? Why am I here? Why am I suffering? I want to enjoy. Where can I enjoy? We can enjoy in the spiritual world. We cannot enjoy really here, not in this place. So when a devotee suffers, a devotee sees this as Krishna's mercy, that Krishna is very kind to me. Krishna says, when I am very merciful to someone, I take away all their enjoyment. In that helpless condition, they surrender to me. And there's a nice verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam says, if one tolerates all the difficulties but goes on with devotional service, then he becomes qualified to become devotee. So we should all think very clearly about our situation here at this time. We should think how kind Lord Krishna is that he has given us so much difficulty, so much trouble. He's taken away everything from us. Mm -hmm. 
कृपा कर दो बेला में भगवान ने हमें and I'm stuck in my house, I have nowhere to go, I can't go anywhere. And all I've got is my Japa Mala and my Bhagavad Gita. Oh, we're very lucky, very, very lucky. Krishna is so kind. So we want to take advantage of this situation to become more conscious of Krishna. Okay, are there any questions? Yes, the question is from a question, sir. Does everybody understand? Everybody agree that, that this lockdown, this lockdown is Krishna's mercy. No business, no money. Only Krishna consciousness. Everyone's very quiet. It means everybody agrees. Maharaj, Dhamma Prabhu is requesting that there is some uh, more time and if Maharaj you are convenient, you can give a little more time if you are only convenient. No, okay. And so, Anyway, we want everyone to understand how Krishna's mercy appears in different ways. We said, Prabhupada used to say, said, God is like a person with ten, ten arms. So we've only got two arms. So if God has got ten arms. He wants to take, if He wants to take from us, He can take everything. And if he wants to give something with ten arms, he can give so much. We've only got two arms, what can we hold? He, he can give us so much if he wants. So we have to understand how the Lord works. We have to understand, He has a plan. He has a plan for all of us. And he, the plan is to help us all become God conscious. Five hundred years ago he came himself as Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to teach everyone the Yuga Dharma, the chanting of the holy names. 
And Lord Chaitanya predicted the holy name would be chanted all over the world, every town and village, and we're seeing it happen. So that, that is very pleasing to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, at least the chanting is being spread everywhere. But we have to teach everyone also more, we have to t not only teach them the chanting, we have to teach them to understand the message of Krishna, how to surrender to Krishna, how to become a devotee. Of course, there are different kinds of devotees. Just like in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna describes about different people who surrender to him. Chatur Vidya Bhajanti Mam Jnana Sukriti No Arjuna Arto Jignasur Artarti Jnani Cha Bharatashaba Lord Krishna describes four kinds of people who surrender to him. Somebody comes in distress, somebody comes in search of wealth, somebody comes out of curiosity, and somebody comes in search of knowledge. What happened? Hare Krishna. I think she is logged out. Okay, come, come in again. What's she doing? Are you okay? Yes, yes, I am. So I said four kinds of people come to Krishna to surrender for different reasons. A lot of people come in distress. Just like Gajendra, the elephant was in distress. The crocodile had got the foot of Gajendra and he wouldn't let go. And Gajendra was in a lot of trouble. He was fighting, he was fighting, trying to get free, but the crocodile was at home, he was in the water, and the water is the home of the crocodile. So finally Gajendra surrendered to Krishna. He'd learned the mantra in his previous life. So now we should all be learning mantras. This is a very good time with the lockdown. We can recite many mantras. 
राम्रोसँगले यो लक लकडाउनको टाइम कि हामीले अलग अलग मन्त्रहरू सिक्न सक्छौँ Of course, Hare Krishna mantra is very good, but there's a many other prayers, nice mantras, nice ways to worship the Lord. Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is the most important mantra, but there are many other mantras that are the most important mantras. So, Gajendra, in his previous life, he had been a king. He'd been a great saint, but he made some offense. and he got cursed to become an elephant. So in his previous life he had learned some mantras how to worship the Lord. So when the crocodile had his foot, then he he remembered that prayer he used to offer to the Lord. And the Lord came and saved him from the crocodile. And then Dhruva Maharaj, he wanted money, so he, wa he wanted a kingdom, he wanted wealth, and he went to the forest to find God. And he found him in six months, the Lord came there. So you want money, you can, you know, you can worship God. He, if, you, if, you're, if you're very determined, He can give you money if that's what you want. People think, oh, if I get money, all my problems are solved. No, your problems begin. The more you get money, the more you have problems. And so when Dhruva Maharaj got his wish, he said, no, no, I don't want it. But Krishna told him, he said, no, you're going to take it now. You prayed for it, now you're going to take it. And so because of this, Dhruva Maharaj sustained the material world for a long time. He couldn't go back to Godhead for a long time. So we should be very careful what we desire when we chant Hare Krishna. Most people come in distress. Queen Kunti was in distress, but her distress was very good. Queen Kunti had so many troubles because her sons, the Pandavas, they were always trying to be killed, they were trying to kill them. Her sons, the Pandavas, they tried to kill them, they had the battle of Kurukshetra, tried to kill them, 
They put them in the house of Shelak, they set it on fire, they tried to burn them, they'd give poison to Bhima, they did so many things to try to kill the sons of Kunti. So Kunti suffered a lot, but she said all of the suffering it was good because I could remember Krishna more. And she said, the more I remember Krishna, the more I know I will not be seeing again birth and death. I'll get out of the birth and death. So we are so fortunate to have the human body in the earth planet. This is the best place. If we were in the heavenly planets, it's not so good. If we were in hell, it's not good. Heavenly planets, there's too much sense gratification, too much comfort. Too much enjoyment. So we get so attached to the comfort, the luxury. We, if we go to heaven, we don't want to become Krishna conscious. We just want to stay there. And you stay there a long time, but still you have to leave it. So demigods, difficult for them to go back to Godhead. They have to wait for the end of the life of Brahma. Maybe at the end of the life of Brahma, maybe they can go back to Godhead. Just now Brahma is about in the middle of his life. He's about 50 or 52 years old. So he has still a long time to live. Brahma lives for 100 years. Right? And every year 12 months and every month 30 days. And one day has uh, 1,000 cycles, 1,000 Divya Yugas. Yeah, Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Sahasra Yuga Paryantam Aharyad Brahman Ovidu. That 1000 ages taken together is one day of Brahma. And one, there's one day, then there's one night, the same duration as the day. Yeah, and with the Kali Yuga, this one Kali Yuga, 432,000 years. Child like 432,000. Child like. 
Right? And there's one thousand of these four ages. And that's just one day of Brahma. So just imagine the life of Brahma, how many years, millions and billions and billions of years. So you have to stay in the material world a long time. Prithvi ma ekdom kati ho kati sal, jinu parcha, hai. Maharaj says it's small announcement, uh, this uh, is going to, you, you are going, going to be locked out and then you have to log, log in again. Oh, okay. In 30 minutes, because it's going to be... Yeah, yeah, I know. So, we, we want you to understand, if we become Krishna conscious now in this time by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya and the chanting of the Holy Name, we can get out of the material world, we can go back to Godhead. We don't have to wait for the end of Brahma's life. It's the only way to get out. The, the demigods, they can't get out. They have to come down here to join in the Sankirtan to take the mercy of Lord Chaitanya to go back to Godhead. So the Sankirtan movement is very important, very powerful. We should take advantage to join the Sankirtan. If we go to Vaikuntha and Vaikuntha, all the residents in Vaikuntha, they're engaging, they do Sankirtan. They're all chanting the holy name. So very important, everyone should learn to chant the holy name, have nice kirtan every day in your home. You want to be chanting the holy name and experiencing an awakening of our Krishna consciousness. Krishna consciousness is so easy thing, so easy for easy to perform, but we're so stubborn, we're so lazy, we won't do it.
Hare Krishna. Back again. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. What about our translator? I will invite them. <laughs> Hare Krishna. So I, I was explaining how Krishna describes the great mercy of the Sankirtan movement in the ninth chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Raja Vidya Raja Goyam Pavitram Idamutamam Prapyak Shavagamam Dharmyam Susukam Kartamavyayam This knowledge is the king of knowledge, the most confidential knowledge. It is directly experienced how we become joyful and how we become purified. Other processes you have to suffer, so painful, so difficult. Just like if you do yoga, so much difficulty, so much trouble, pains in the body, pains in the legs, aching, so much practice. Now if you do meditation, you have to sit, you have to sit still, you can't move, your body aches. But Krishna consciousness is just chanting and dancing, ecstasy from beginning to end. And if we just take prasada, then we, we can experience so much wonderful bliss. No, Prabhupada, he said, just by taking prasadam we can go back to God. Hey, he took a sweet ball, put it in his mouth. So nobody else has a process like Krishna consciousness. It's so sublime, it's so joyful. And so we should, we want to take full advantage of this mercy of Lord Chaitanya. Yeah, and in other ages there was also the chanting of the holy name. But in other ages people were so proud they didn't like to chant the holy name. Um, 
Sometimes people think, oh, this chanting, this is just emotional, this is just sentimental, this is not real spiritual. But if, if you read the Brihad Bhagavadam Rita, which is a book by Sanatana Goswami, he describes how this one man, Gokumar from the Govardhan, he went to Vaikuntha and he met the Vaikuntha and they were all doing Sankirtan. People in Vaikuntha don't sit and meditate, they do Sankirtan. People in Vaikuntha, they don't do Hatha Yoga. No, they're all chanting the holy name and they're engaging in the service of the Lord. And they're glorifying, they're speaking the glories of the Lord. So this is very important activity for devotees. When we come together that we want to hear about Krishna, we want to discuss topics of Krishna. Lord Kapila says, Satam prasanga mama virya samvido bhavanti ritkarana rasayana kata taj joshana jyash apavarga vartmani shradharatir bhaktir nukramishyati. Lord Kapila telling his mother, the importance of hearing about Krishna in the association of devotees. Yeah, Lord Kapila's mother Devahuti, her husband Kadama had gone away, taken sannyas, he left home, left her alone. All right, you get a husband, he's not going to stay with you forever, he's going to leave you one day. Husband, either he'll take sannyas or he's going to die. One way or another, he will leave you. So Devahuti was troubled in her mind that my husband gone away and left me, what to do? So she was fortunate because she has a son and her son is the incarnation of God, Kapila. So Lord Kapila told his mother, he said, attachment for the material is the cause of the greatest bondage. Uh, 
यो भौतिक संसारमा आसक्ति लिएर आउँछ अनि कुनै न कुनै व्यक्ति सँग यसरी आसक्त भयो भने यो भौतिक संसारमा तपाईँलाई जोडेर राख्छ But the same attachment, if you apply it to the spiritual, that can be the greatest benefit. So Lord Kapila told his mother, he said, you have to become attached to a sadhu. Yeah, don't just be attached to your husband, you have to become attached to a sadhu. The sadhu is the one who is going to give you Krishna consciousness. How to recognize a sadhu? It's not just only, it's not just the beard, the big beard, he should have a big beard or he should have saffron dress. That's not the sadhu. You know, pe people, they think sadhu means somebody with a big beard or, you know, he's got powerful eyes, he can control you. They think, oh, he's a powerful sadhu. That's not the real sadhu. You have to hear from the sadhu. I mean, you hear that the, the words of the sadhu, they can change us. Just just like Prabhupada went to, when he first met his spiritual master, he didn't know, of course, he was his spiritual master. When Prabhupada came there, he went to see Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, and immediately Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati said, Why don't you teach the message of Lord Chaitanya all over the world? <laughs> And Prabhupada said at that time I was a follower of Gandhi and I, saw, I told him, I said, well, our country, India, is not independent yet. We have to get independence. When we get independence, then we can preach the message of Lord Chaitanya. But Bhakti Siddhanta did not accept. He said, no, this is not true. He said, Krishna consciousness is more important. It cannot wait for some political adjustment. Devotional service does not depend on anything material. We can be Krishna conscious anywhere, in any condition. Srimad, Srimad Bhagavatam describes about the child in the womb of the mother. 
and how the child in the womb of the mother can pray to Krishna. We may wonder, how could the child be Krishna conscious in the womb? Doesn't, you don't need all the paraphernalia. You can be Krishna conscious. You just have to control your mind. Narayana Parasarve Nakutaschinya Vibhyate Swarga Pavarga Narakesh Vapitu Yatadarshana. One who is surrendered to the Lord, they don't see any difference between hell and heaven and liberation. So Lord Kapila told his mother, you have to be, you have to get attached to a sadhu, you have to find the right sadhu with the qualities of the sadhu. And you don't judge the sadhu just by the dress or just by the ashram. You don't judge the sadhu by his eyes or the skin. You have to hear, and then you, if you hear properly, you have to become convinced. So Lord Kapila told his mother, topics of Lord Krishna, when heard in the association of devotees, very pleasing to the ear and to the heart. By hearing in the association of devotees, then we become liberated and then we awaken real knowledge and devotion. So we want to cultivate our devotion for Krishna. It's by devotion we can know Krishna, not on anything else. If we cultivate knowledge, it takes a very long time, very slow process. But if we cultivate devotion, then quickly we can come to understand the truth. And where there's genuine devotion, there will be also knowledge and detachment. Gyan and Vairag, they automatically follow wherever there is bhakti. So one who is a devotee, he also knows about Krishna and he's also detached from the material world. So we want to understand the science of Krishna consciousness. It's very 
very important for human life. Human life is meant for this knowledge. Prahlad Maharaj said, Kumara Charet Pragno Dharmam Bhagavatam Actually, we should begin our study of this knowledge from the age of five when we are young children. If you get the right education, that's a good education. From the beginning of life, you learn about Krishna consciousness. That's a very good birth, a fortunate birth. In Chaitanya Charitamrita it describes when one is actually fortunate, then he contacts the spiritual master, he gets the seed of devotion. It's very rare. It doesn't happen very often. It's very special. We give the example, just like there's, there's a fish sw swimming in the bottom of the sea and the ocean is so big and on the surface of the ocean there's one piece of wood. So that fish is in the bottom of the sea and he comes up and he comes up and he puts his nose right through the hole in the wood. There's a one piece of wood floating on the ocean and in the middle of that piece of wood there's one hole and the fish puts his nose right through that hole in the wood. It's very rare. So it's very rare to get the human birth. Just to get human birth, there's eight million, there's eighty-four like species of life. We're very fortunate to get a human birth. But we're even more fortunate because we get the association of devotees. There are so many human beings, but they don't all have the association of devotees. Only fortunate souls have got association with devotees. In the association of devotees, they have a chance to become Krishna conscious, to get out of the material world. Everyone has got a mother and father, every living entity, even the snakes and the dogs, they've all got mothers and fathers. 
کپی دیر جلدی سی آمرا با من جان نه دیر سی کی سات سیانی آمرا با من جان کوتاه سیانی آمرا با من جانی. Mother pig, father pig, all the different living entities they all have their parents. So just to have your parents, that is not something, they're just not so special thing. But one who is fortunate, they've got the spiritual teacher, they've got the guru. By the grace of the guru, they get Krishna. And because the guru is going to teach the, the devotee about how to do bhakti yoga, how to practice, how to water, the, he's going to plant the seed of devotion in their heart and then teach them how to water that seed. Right? The watering process is hearing and chanting. We have to water regularly. Now we are seeing, you want to grow some vegetables, you have to water, you have to take care of them, you have to make sure the weeds don't grow. When you pour the water, then the weeds also grow. So we have to pull out the weeds. We have to, we have to be careful which one is the weed and which one is the seed of bhakti. Just like there's a story about the man had the fever, so they brought the doctor to treat the, per the person with the fever. So doctor came, gave him an injection, and then patient died. So they said, oh, he's, he's, he's dead. But the doctor said, well, fever's gone, no more fever. <laughs> So sometimes people are like that, they go in the garden, they pull out all, everything, they pull out all the plants and all the seeds, they don't just pull out the weeds, they pull up everything. They didn't know what was the plant and what was the weed. And so we have to know what are the weeds. What the, the weeds are all the sinful activities, all the bad things, bad habits which we have. Just like now it's locked down, so many people, they're watching movies. They sit and they watch the Bollywood movie every day. 
अनि जस्ट कोई की लॉकडाउन चल रही था अनि सब पहले के और सन ऐसा बंदा खेरी बस रा बॉलीवुड बॉलीवुड को पिक्चर है रे सन अनि and they watch one movie after another movie and uh, this goes on every day more and more watching movies ani aile ek chin ma euta hechan ani bare ek chin ma feri arko hechan teso garda garde kate o kate picture herde janchan na are and in this way they waste a human life and they put so much garbage in their mind ani es karan ne unale kate o kate So we, have, we have to be very careful how we use our human our time. Chanakya Pandit said time is the most valuable thing. You have to use it very carefully. You can buy gold, but you cannot buy time. So we want to use our time very carefully for the service of Lord Krishna. Okay, so we will stop here today, I think. Any question? Nothing? I know you people. Uh, Maya, there's one uh, uh, question from Nimai Prabhuji. Yeah. From Chaam. Yeah. भक्ति को लागि भक्ति में प्रगति करना को लागि सब भंडा सजीलो रा सरल उपाय क्या ही था? मैं चीज आस्किंग दैट टू कॉल्फेड भक्ति व्हाट इज़ द इज़ीस्ट प्रोसेस एंड वेरी प्रगति करना को लागि टू टू गेट टू गेट प्रोग्रेशन इन भक्ति व्हाट इज़ द इज़ीस्ट अनि सजीलो अनि सजीलो साधना क्या जा� What is the easiest sadhana, Maharaj? She's asking. To get progression in bhakti, what is the easiest uh, sadhana we should follow? Well, you should chant the holy name. That's the easiest sadhana. You do Hari Nam Sankirtan. So when you bhagwan ka naam jap nu hari, Sankirtan gaan nu hari. That's the easiest process. It's the most joyful. And it's the best way, easiest way to make progress. You have to do the sankirtan. You have to have the chanting of the holy name. Uh, people do. They have the deity. They do the puja, and they do the. They do the. They, they maybe read the book, but the best thing is to do sankirtan. And just to keep, just to keep. When you कलेर दोष निधि राजन अस्ति है को महत्वगुना कृष्ण कृतन देव कृष्ण श्या मुक्त संग परम ब्रजत The age of Kali is full of faults, but one good thing, simply by chanting the holy name, you can get all perfection. So everyone should join the Sankirtan as soon as possible. कल युग धर्म हरि नाम संकीर्तन कृष्ण शक्ति विनिनाही थरा प्रवर्तन 
In the Kali Yuga, the process is Sankirtan. The Yuga Dharma is Sankirtan. You just need to get the Krishna Shakti, you just need the energy of Krishna, then you can get everyone to join, to take part. Lord Chaitanya spent most of his time just doing Sankirtan. He only discussed philosophy with a few people, but most of the time Sankirtan. You want your home to be peaceful? Do Sankirtan at home. Get everybody to come and join in, sit and chant. You ask them to chant Japa, maybe difficult. But Sankirtan, very easy. Okay. Okay. Any other question? There's one more question. Yeah. Uh, Maharaj, there is a question from Nanda Sutta Prabhu. He is asking that many of the times uh, while um, uh, listening to the lecture, some also chant. So how is it correlated? Is it good to chant or while listening to the lecture or it's not? He's asking that question, Maharaj. Well, if you're chanting, then you're not listening to the lecture. You can't do two things at one time. You have to decide what you want to do. Either you want to hear the lecture or you want to chant. You can't do both. There's one more question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is asking that according to the Nepalese custom, when there is a death in a person's house, we're not allowed 13 days, we have to do some rituals without eating. Uh, at that process, you're not allowed to, the Nepal, according to Nepali custom, they're not allowed to enter the deity room or do the seva service, anything. So he's asking that on the, like for some people, uh, they just have to do five days, but the original custom is for 13 days. So while the 13 days is going on, he finished his uh, ritual on the fifth day. Does he have to continue uh, 
without doing the service or can he, can he continue on the fifth day itself? Yeah, he can continue on the fifth day. Okay, Maharaj. Actually, devotee, for devotees, you see, devotees are transcendental. This is, oh, 